Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a good one for you. We're talking about techniques that you can use when the bike gets tough in the fall. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. Okay guys, to get us started, it would not be a finesse technique video without none other than your drop shot. Okay, guys. Uh, drop shot. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna want to use this when the bass are, you know, of course they're chasing the young shad, but when they're not coming up to, or they're coming up to the top, exploding, and then you notice that they're not just constantly blowing up on them, but they come up, get a shad, go back down to the bottom. Drop shot's gonna let you spend above them, give your presentation, create that reaction strike. Some of the baits that I like to use is the cotton candy trawl from Maxent. Excellent drop shot lure. It's a Berkeley Maxent. It's a candy crawl. Another one with my absolute favorite is the Black Smoke Purple Maxent Flatworm. Your natural shad color in the flatworm. Another deadly one. Going into worm styles, the Margarita Mutilator 4 inch by Roboworm. The uh, Hologram Shad 4 inch by Roboworm. And the Baby Bluegill by Roboworm. For you guys that like uh, fluke style baits, the zoom tiny flukes work real well in your drop shot. And the Berkeley flat nose fluke style. Excellent bait too. Oh, and I can't can't do this video without saying about the Stray King caffeine shed. That's another great bait. Got a lot of action. But it's a straight tail fluke style. That's the Pearl Shad by Stray King. Okay guys. Moving into the next one, when we're in fernal conditions and the bass aren't coming up and exploding, but we know they're, you know, this could be in the uh, mouth creeks, up in the creeks. If you don't have anything like that, a lot of times they'll push them into the coves. But fairly new rig, the hover rig with the baby bass caffeine shad. The way I would use this is... If I know they're feeding on shad, but they're not exploding on them, you know, blowing up on them, I'm going to cast that out to the depth that I think they're at, count it down. And then I'm going to reel up real slow, and I'm going to shake that rod tip. And this is going to cause that tail to swim, and that bait's going to dart left to right, left to right as it's coming through. It gives it the look of a lonely bait fish trying to find its school, you know, maybe trying to get away from predators or something. Uh, so, you know, you can fish that mid-column. It's a deadly, deadly technique. I've had a lot of... You can even use the Berkeley flatworms. I use the Berkeley flatworms with the hover rig um, by uh, and had great success. So, you know, it has a lot of nice action and it hovers there. Really cool looking lure in the water and they just come on wild for it. So you can do the flatworms too. Okay, guys. Hey, if you like what you're seeing here, <clears throat> please smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. It helps out the channel tremendously, and I appreciate it greatly. I really appreciate you subscribing. And as always, if you got something you'd like to add to this, or any questions, any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. Okay, guys, moving on. Your... Paddle tail swim bait. This is a uh, three inch Kitek Easy Swimmer, I believe it is, on a eighth ounce Berkeley Fusion swim bait head. That's just the swim bait head I use. I mean, you can use whatever you have or whatever you like more, but that's the one that's readily available in my area, and I haven't had any issues with it, so it's just the one I use. Um, some colors that I like in the Kitek three inch is the easy shiner this is sight flash color and then i also like the 
shag color, three inch, and the easy sweat shiner. Guys, you can work that on a, if they are feeding actively and you know it on the skull of your um, shad, throw an underspin, this being the quarter ounce Berkeley Fusion underspin. Or you can do the, if they're not going after that, maybe try the Yokoshira screw head by Mega Bass. And this is the eighth ounce that I have here. Just gives it a different look, more flash, different vibe, vibrations. And sometimes it's just as minute changes that are, you know, you're on the fish, but they're not taking one thing. There's little minute changes. Can be the chance, be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. Okay, guys. So moving right along. Speaking of mid column bait fishing for the bass, wouldn't be a video without talking about spy baits. I have the uh, Storm Arashi spy bait. And this one, I'm trying to think. I can't think of the name. It's a popular one. I just can't think of the name. A little smaller in comparison to this Storm Arashi. Sometimes they went a little bigger. Sometimes they went a little smaller. You want to match your hatch. And then I have those, so this one here. Anyhow, guys, this is an open water technique for you guys that don't know. You're going to want to cast it out. You know, it's when they're feeding on the shad or whatever out in open water. You cast it out kind of down to the school. I mean, you're going to reel it in real slow. And that those blades are going to throw flash, and that lure is just going to have a slight body roll. It makes it look like a natural bait fish just swimming through the water. Um, deadly technique. Another deadly technique that I want to talk about is the Gary Yamamoto Senka Wacky Rig. Weightless. You can throw it up around docks. If, you know, if you got a bluebird skies, they're going to go to the docks or under overhanging trees that still have shade. They're going to look for that shade. You can throw that wacky rig up under there to, you know, skip it up underneath there to get your strikes. Or, if you can do it, the weighted wacky rig, which is going to create more of a of a swinging action as that bait falls versus the weighted it's going to be a little bit more subtle the weighted's going to create more of a flapping action as it falls down it's an excellent excellent technique guys it works year round but definitely in the fall when the bike gets tough now we can't be talking finesse without mentioning the ned rig guys before i go any further the key is to stay natural colors, your bait fish colors, your bluegills, your baby bass, your shad, your crawfish pattern, you know, your browns, your green pumpkins, your maybe copper chews um, colors. But the Ned Rig, this is for when they're down on the bottom refusing to come up. I'm going to drag this down there, give them an offering. I have the smelt, this is a deadly color, and the TRD ticklers. Those little appendages uh, give you know give a little secondary action when it's just sitting there and wiggling around. Um, but you can also use your original TRDs, uh, your original Neds that got just that real minute, hardly any action. Or you can go with the uh, Ned Bomb, you know, that has that little paddle tail that's going to have a little bit more of a sway to it when it's sitting there. Technique that I like, guys, is drag it across the bottom, let it set 10, 15, 30 seconds. Drag it across the bottom, maybe let it set for 10 seconds and then pop it. Um, just find out what they want. You know, a lot of times if I'm dragging it and letting it set and they're not biting it, but I know they're on a net bite, I might pop it just because they might be looking at it, and that pop could create a reaction strike. Okay, guys, and finally... Wouldn't be a finesse video without the shaky head. This is the owner's shaky head with the screw lock there. 
Some guys don't like the screw lock. I don't have, seem to have an issue with it. Let's see. There you go. Um, the baits that I would run on this, you could run a paddle tail. Most of the time it's going to be a straight tail worm. Obviously your shad pattern, your bluegill pattern. Um, four inch or whatever, you know, if you go with the robo worm, I would suggest going with the fat worms. You know, so that you can screw it on there and have a little bit more profile on the four inch. But shaky head, again, out of long lay downs, long, you know, up in those coves. When you know they're, they're eating on the bottom, and this will be predominant on crayfish eaters and uh, your fisheries that predominantly the bass are eating crayfish right now. Cast it out there, let it get to the bottom, and then drag. And reel up, let it sit there for a minute, because a lot of times what will happen, that worm will come up, and it's wiggling, and it'll slowly drop. And you want to watch your line, because a lot of times I've had bass, when it's on the slow drop, they just come in, suck it up, and just subtly swim away with it. And then drag it some more, letting it bounce off everything on the bottom. Again, guys, it's it's pretty simple technique. You know, you're going to fish this around your points, your ledges, your... Um, drop-offs, you know, maybe mouth creeks, round laydowns, dock pilings, you know, wherever you, you know, rock piles. Uh, transition places, maybe where these bass are setting up to ambush, and that could be bluebird skies, your docks, uh, points, drop-offs, um, overhanging trees, and again, on bluebird skies. Uh, you know, up deep in your creeks. If you have creek channels that run up deep, you know, feeder creeks that run up deep, they'll run up there, they'll push the shad up there and feed on them. Or even at the mouth of the creeks. Uh, coves, again, you know, little inlets that, coves that they go back into to corral their shad. You know, um, these are all great ambush places. So, like I said before, guys, if you liked what you've seen here on the video today, please smash the thumbs up button. If uh, there's something you'd like to add or you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you got something you'd like to add, please share it with us. We could all learn from each other, and that's what it's all about. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It helps out the tremendously helps out the channel, and I appreciate it greatly. So, guys, we'll see you on the next one. I hope you liked it. Thanks. Bye.